I'm sorry, Justin. Hi, sorry, I have to apologize to Justin Bieber because I have already made a mistake. You might be asking, what are you talking about? You've just started the video. Today's video is sorry versus excuse me. Uh, now, I'm living in Canada uh, and they're very, well, they're world famous for saying sorry. But even Canadians can learn a lesson from this particular lesson because there's a time to use excuse me and a time to use sorry. Let's go to the board and explore it. So E, E singing as well, I'm sorry. And Justin uh, Bieber is Canadian. He, I guess in this song he couldn't say excuse me because he already screwed up. How do we know? We're gonna explain on the board here. And I put them in order for a specific reason because they happen at different times. We say excuse me, excuse me is a phrase, okay? Because it's got more than two words, it's not a word. It's a phrase, but I broke it down and said, well, let's look at excuse. I know what me is, right? Uh, pronoun, but why do we say excuse me? Well, we, excuse is a verb. It means to judge with forgiveness. In other words, you're about to see something and when you judge or think about it, you need to do it with forgiveness in your heart, which means you need to give me some space or not to judge me badly or, or be too, um, too hard on me, okay? Also, it means to overlook. It means to not look at something, to go by it. So if you overlook something, imagine there's a white wall and then there's a little black mark right there. Now you go, the wall is perfectly clean, but there's a little black mark. You're not going to destroy the wall. You just overlook it and say, okay, I'm just going to ignore that because it's a small blemish or a small, uh, a small mark and it doesn't destroy the whole thing. Or apologize. So when you say, excuse me, you can be apologizing to someone. In this case, to get a general rule, we can say, excuse me is usually said before you have done something wrong, okay? And to give you examples where this might come in true or be true, the first one is to get someone's attention. Now, in a restaurant, you'll find a lot of Canadians, or not Canadians, Americans, British people, they'll go, excuse me, excuse me, because they want to get your attention. They're directing you to get someone to look at them. They haven't done anything wrong, but they do need your attention, so excuse me comes up there, right? Remember we talked about forgiveness, overlook, and apologize. So overlook me yelling in the restaurant, excuse me, because I actually need your help. Or in a store, I need your help. I don't know your name. Your name might be Susie, but I don't know Susie. So I have to go, excuse me, okay? So forgive me for calling you like that, but we don't know each other well enough yet. Interrupt somebody. Now, imagine I'm working at my desk and you need my attention, right? So going back to attention, but I'm actually working. I'm not just standing there. You might say, excuse me, because I'm interrupting you, right? And we go up to here when we go, I'm apologizing for interrupting you during your work, right? It's very polite because in saying that, it's like, I'm acknowledging or I know that you're working and I respect that, but I need your attention. And the third one we have down here is ask somebody to move. Now, I'm apologizing in a way because I am interrupting you, but I need your attention because you have to move. All three. So if you're getting on a bus and someone's sitting there and they have their bag there and you go, excuse me, can I have that seat? Okay, excuse me, I need your attention. I don't know your name. I'm interrupting you because you're sitting down maybe playing a video game, I don't know. And I'm asking you to move, please. All right, so excuse me, could you move over? I need that chair. Cool, all right, so we've got all that. <clears throat> this is excuse me. Now there are some exceptions to that. Where I might say, I'm sorry to interrupt uh, when, sorry, let me come back to you on that one because I want to actually do that over here when we say sorry. This is an exception that I'll come back to. Let's go over to sorry, seeing as I started there and I'm sorry I did. <laughs> I'll go over to sorry to show you how that's different. Sorry is an adjective. So right off the, the right at the bat, we can see that, right off the bat, sorry, we can see that an adjective is different than a phrase. So even in the formation, they're different, right? When we talk about sorry, it means to feel distress. Something is stressing you out. It means to also offer sympathy, which you don't see over here, right? And it's an apology. So this is where they come together. And this is where people have a problem because we know sorry is an apology. And excuse me, can you be used to apologize for doing something? But apologize is a verb and an apology is a noun, okay? So we're offering two different things when we use these words and we wanna keep that in mind. Now. Here's the other difference besides the, the structure. We usually say sorry after you've done something wrong. 
Now keep that in mind. We use excuse me before we've done something. So we're saying we know what we're about to do isn't comfortable or isn't good, and I want to bring that attention. I want to be polite and let you know. But we say sorry after we've done it because it's like, oh, too late, I've already done it. So excuse me, doesn't quite work. You have to say I'm sorry because I've done it. We use sorry to show sympathy for unpleasant news. Let me give you an example. I'm sorry to hear that your dog died. I have sympathy for the pain that you're going through. I feel for you. Okay? Disappointment of what you wish you could have done. Let me give you an example. Oh, sorry, you, what you could have done and you could have changed something. So I'll give you an example. You have $100 and you buy comic books. $100 worth of comic books. Batman comic books. So, but I forgive you already, okay? Don't worry, you don't have to say sorry to me. But you buy $100 worth of Batman comic books. Then you go to the train, you get to the train, and the train costs $75. I bet you're sorry now that you spent your money. You wish you could have changed it. You did the right thing. Trust me, in 100 years, those Batman comic books will be way, way more money. But you wish you could have done something, so you're sorry that that had happened, okay? Now, what about this one? Sorry to say you can't do something. Well, oftentimes, people, someone will say, hey, I'm having a party Friday night. Can you come? And you go, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I got to work that night. Wish I could, but I just can't do it. Sorry. Right? You can't use excuse me in this one. You have to say, I'm sorry. Right? Because you are apologizing in a way. You're offering up an apology for your inability to attend that, in that function or that invitation. Now, I like this one. Describe a bad situation. And I know you're going, how can you say sorry? I, I don't understand. Now, how about this? You're a sorry excuse of a man. You're a bad man. This is a sorry excuse for, a, for an educational facility. It's a bad school. So you can put that sorry in a sentence and you're not apologizing. You're saying what this is is disgusting or bad. I like it, see? I'm not just giving you basic English. I'm giving you English to insult people in a native way. Now, can you imagine walking up to someone to say, you're a sorry excuse for a man. You're saying you're not a man. You're nothing. You're not even a boy. You're a worm. Sorry. No, I don't. No disrespect. Okay. You understand? Right. So you say it's a sorry situation. You're saying there's like no excuse for this. Hmm. Some people are sorry examples of leaders. I'll let you do your own math. Okay. So I wanted to come back over here because I said, excuse me and sorry can't be used for the same, but sometimes we use sorry to interrupt. Remember I said we could talk about excuse me, use excuse me, because it's before you do something. And I came back and said, oop, because I kind of interrupted myself. Here's the exception where you say, I'm sorry. When you say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, it's because, now, let's take a step back, understand the logic here. As I say to you, I'm sorry to interrupt, I've already interrupted you. Remember I said you use sorry after you've done something? Well, that just me saying the words, I'm sorry to interrupt you, has interrupted you, I've already done it. So sometimes you hear it, so because I know some people go, well, you can say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, and that, I mean, yeah, that's an exception, because actually, you've already interrupted them. Excuse me is like, I'm, we say that as a preamble, or a, we're, we're saying pre, before, like, before I interrupt you. But the fact of the matter is, you already have interrupted someone. So that's why sometimes you hear people say, I'm sorry to interrupt, instead of excuse me to interrupt. Because they understand just by saying the words, if somebody's concentrating and writing, and you go, I'm sorry to interrupt you, like, yeah, you just did. I was busy. What do you want? But I'm trying to be polite, and I'm, here I'm acknowledging that I've already done it. Here I'm saying I'm not about to, or I'm just about to interrupt, but I want to be polite. I'm not an ignorant or non-knowing person. Cool? So I'm about to, oh, sorry, I forgot. Notice how I said I'm sorry. I forgot about the exception over here. Now, there is an exception for sorry um, that we, we, you have to say, instead of excuse me, you have to say sorry. After you pass gas, and you're probably saying, what is passing gas? Well, if you're, prob if you're thinking, I know what gas is, teacher, I know it's not petrol. Gasoline in North America is what I put in my car and I can drive away, but I don't know why I would have to say sorry. Well, this is what happens when you, <clears throat> when you pass gas or you fart, that's the word we actually use here, when you fart, or you have bad smell coming from your bum into the air that other people have to smell, then you say, excuse me. What? You don't say sorry, you say, excuse me. I don't know why, because you've already put it in the air and everyone has to smell it. 
Oh, oh my God, excuse me. Oh, it was unfortunate. I didn't mean for that to come out. Oof, bad. Or here's my favorite one. Another one for excuse me instead of sorry is, and I have to give you two. I'll give you this one right now is when you don't like what you hear, you say, excuse me. And you're probably going, sorry. When you say sorry in that particular sense, it means I didn't hear what you said correctly. So sometimes you'll hear people say, sorry. And they mean, what did you say? Well, I'll repeat. If I go, excuse me, both of these things are talking about hearing. But in the first case, sorry means, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that sound you were giving me. But when I go, excuse me, I don't like what I just heard. I don't like what you said. So if you said, hey, you know, James, you and he uh, should retire this show. And I go, excuse me? Huh? Huh? Excuse me? And you might go, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to say that. And I go, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Anyway, so the exceptions are funny because I put them in opposite sides just to tell you that in this particular case, after passing gas, you say, excuse me, you don't say sorry, right? Unless it's really foul or really bad, then you should say sorry because that's just rude. Okay. But when you say, excuse me, you don't say sorry for, I didn't, I don't like what I heard. You say, excuse me. And with the tone of my voice, you can tell that I don't like what you just said to me. All right. But when I say, sorry, I actually didn't hear what you said. Are we cool? Great. Now we've done that. A quick review, just a quick one. Just remember, excuse me comes first. And that's why I put it first before you do something that you're going to be sorry about. <laughs> sorry there. And sorry comes after you've done that, after you've done something wrong. If you can keep those in mind, you'll know almost 90% when to use them. And don't forget the exceptions I just told you about. When passing gas, you say, sorry. <laughs> so excuse me. You say, excuse me, remember? Because I, I don't know why we say it afterwards, but we do. And excuse me is used for things you don't like that you hear. Excuse me? What do you mean my prime minister isn't a good guy? Some people don't think he's a good guy. Or, I'm sorry to interrupt, even though, because the interruption has already taken place, okay? Even though I told you you can use excuse me. Now we've done both of those. Let's go, because we have to do our homework. And even more than that, we have to do, I'm sorry, our quiz. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about the wait. Uh, excuse me as we amble over to the board, which means to walk over to the board. E and I were having a conversation, and... Uh, Let's take a look at it and see how we can use the two words we were working on, sorry and excuse me, to change this into something a little bit, a little bit different. Okay. So first he says, can I have your attention? And then James said, I didn't hear what you said. And he says, I don't want to disturb you, but could you move your foot? James says, I don't think I like what you said. He said, you're stepping on my foot. And then James says, oh, I apologize for doing that. Kind of formal. So let's look at what I think is the first mistake we can have. First thing I think we could get rid of this. Yes, the whole sentence. How about the next one? Yeah, I think we can get rid of the whole sentence. What about this one? Okay. And the next one, you're going, oh my God, James, you're erasing everything. Yeah, because once we use these words, they have so much information loaded in. Sorry, I forgot there, your foot. Because I'm asking you a question, I almost forgot that. There's so much information loaded in the two words that we were using, excuse me and sorry, that whole sentences can be taken or sentence fragments. It can be just removed and use those words alone. And here, another one, we can take rid of, get rid of all of that. And that, there's almost nothing left. And that's right. Let's see what happens when we actually put in the corrections for these sentences. And you're going to have a whole conversation with just a few words. Like a native speaker. All right, ready? So, can I have your attention? What do we say when we said, when we get someone's attention? You can just say this. You can just say, excuse me. That's it. Excuse me. And say it in a questioning way. The voice goes up. Excuse me. It's like a question, an invitation. I gotta be careful. I don't want to keep popping the cap. All right. So excuse me for doing that. It probably destroy, destroys your eardrums. And then James can say this. Watch. He could say this. 
You can just say this, one word. One word. You can just say this. Yep, that's it. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, that's all I need to say. We're having a real conversation now. Next thing. Yeah. Remember, the offense has already happened in this case, so we're not going to say, excuse me, could you move your foot? Sorry, could you move your foot? Now, James says, I'm not usually this rude, okay, before you guys think it's me. It's just me writing a story. Because you know I love E, and I would never step on his foot. First of all, he doesn't have a foot. He's a worm. So <laughs> that would be a physical impossibility. Okay? But I could say this. And then, finally, at the end of the story, at the end, let me just clean up the board a little bit. I think I've got everything there. Ah, hold on a second. Jeez. Excuse me for spelling this incorrectly. There we go. And I need to... All right. So... Look how we've changed this entire story. We started off with all of this, and it can be made down to just this. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry, but could you move your foot? Excuse me? You're stepping on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, what are all these words? Well, it's right there. It's, it's in the tone. It's, it's what it's loaded with. With this excuse me, it's like, can I have your attention? Excuse me. And the other person saying, sorry? I didn't hear what you just said to me. And then, sorry, but could you move your foot? Like, I'm sorry to disturb you as you step on me. And the other guy's like, excuse me? Like, what? Like, you're stepping on my foot. Then, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Anyway, I apologize for oh, having to give you the bonus and almost ending this video too early. But let's look over here. I'm going to give you some other words for excuse me and sorry that are typically used in English, although you'll find that excuse me and sorry are used more. Apologize. Apologize is a verb, and it's to say you're sorry for doing something. I would say that's a little bit more formal than sorry. We throw around sorry. When you say apologize, you're taking the time to maybe give a little bit more, a little bit more emphasis to how sorry you feel. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry you didn't, I know, I'm sorry I stepped on your foot, but I apologize when you say, I'm very sorry about what I've done. Okay? Pardon is to forgive an offense. You'll notice I have that as a noun and a verb because a government can pardon a criminal. So if a criminal has done something wrong, they can forgive that offense. We can also use pardon, funny enough, to say when I don't hear something. If someone says something, I go, oh, excuse me, pardon? It means, what did you say? Similar to sorry, like, I didn't hear what you said. Pardon? Can you repeat that? I beg, my, I beg your pardon, which no one really says these days, but if you did say to someone, I beg your pardon, it's like, could you repeat that? I don't believe you said that. <laughs> Uh, okay, regret. Regret's an interesting one because it's going to seem similar to apologize and sorry. You'll feel sad about something, but it's also another thing that usually goes with the verb time when we use it as a verb. It's about a lost opportunity. Now, I need you to think about that because to say you're sorry, like you wish that, that bad thing didn't happen, but when you regret it, it's like that bad thing happened, but also you notice that there was something lost and lost opportunity. Like, I regret not helping um, my son uh, 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 in the army. No, that's not a good sense. Let me put it this way. I regret uh, not asking that girl out for a date because she's a brilliant woman and she would have made an amazing wife. So not only am I sorry, I'm sad about it, but it was a lost opportunity to have a great wife. Or I regret not writing that book five years ago because now someone else has written it and no one wants to read my book. I'm sorry, not just sorry I feel sad about it, but I lost a good opportunity. So you want to use regret. It's a, it's a nice word that adds a little bit more oomph, right? Gives more information to people. Condolences. Condolences. Condolences is an interesting word because it's not used often, but it has a, um, a very strong meaning in our, our society because it means deep sympathy or deeply sorry for. And it usually is used for death, okay? 
So you're not going to say my condolences on you not doing well on a test. Not good enough. My condolences for stepping in your foot. No, it doesn't meet the, the, the level. Somebody died or has a serious disease. My condolences on, on, on the death of, I don't like using it this way, but on the death of a, a parent or a child. The sorry is, comes from the bottom of my heart, okay? So it's not used often, but it is used. Nobody makes a mistake using it, so I don't want you to use it, okay? My condolences on your steak not being cooked well? No. <laughs> it doesn't fly. You clearly don't speak English. But for death or something serious, absolutely, all right? So now you have a formal word, like a formal jacket you can put on when necessary. Okay, cool. Now, what do I want you to do for homework? I want you to write a letter to somebody that you have wronged. When you have wronged them, it means you've done something to hurt them. Yeah, you don't have to show anyone this one. Uh, you can make an imaginary letter, okay? You can make an imaginary few sentences. But I want you to do that and I want you to use at least three of the words here. Uh, example, you could say, uh, I'm not a criminal, but I regret killing those five people and eating them, right? And my condolences to the families of who had to suffer through what I have done. But I hope the government will pardon me because of the apology I have met. Look, I just used all those. Oh, there. I speak English. And when you speak English, you can do the same thing, right? I use it as a pardon, as what the government can give. I use uh, regret, as sorry, what I did, my condolences, because people lost their lives. And I apologize instead of saying sorry, right? Anyway, you'll have to excuse me because we have to draw this lesson to an end. But what I want to leave you with is... The website, ingvid, www.ingvid.com. Go there, please. Do the test. See how well you've actually mastered this lesson. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. There is a bell around here. Ring my bell and you'll get my latest video. Whenever it comes out, it'll come straight to you. Uh, and as always, thank you. Thank you very much for supporting Ingvid and myself. And this goes out to Mr. T.N. You know who you are because of my just and only video. You came down and said, James, could you do me a video on sorry and excuse me, I get confused, and I hope I've cleared up your confusion. And for any of you out there, if you uh, want me to do a video, pop something down. Watch the video, leave a message, and I do read them and I'll get back to you. All right? Anyway, sorry I got to go, but uh, have a good one. See you soon.